we have to find the limit of this expression as t approaches zero solution. So whenever you're computing limits, it's a good idea to first take this number and put it where all of the t's are. So if you do that, you end up with 1 over 0 in this case. So we have to try something else. So my idea, I haven't done this yet, so is to subtract. Actually perform the subtraction and then see what happens. Let's try it. So first we can rewrite this maybe as 1 over t minus, and notice you can factor a t here. So this is t, t plus 1. Okay, now we can perform the subtraction. So this is the limit, and you always have to write the limit until you actually plug in your number. So the LCD here is t, t plus 1. So what you can do is you can multiply this by t plus 1 over t plus 1. I'll do that. So this is 1 over t, t plus 1, over t plus 1. We're basically multiplying by 1 so that we can actually subtract these fractions. Right? You can only subtract fractions when the bottoms are the same. In other words, when the denominators are equal. And so that's, now that's exactly what we have, right? Because here the bottom is t, t plus 1, and here it's t, t plus 1. So this is the limit as t approaches 0. Up top we have 1 times t plus 1, so just t plus 1 minus 1 all over the same fraction on the the same term on the bottom so t t plus 1 the ones cancel so this is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 of t over t times t plus 1 the t's cancel beautiful stuff we get the limit I always have to write that limit until the very end right when you plug in the number so 1 over t plus 1. And now we're finally in a place where we can take the t and plug it in. So t is equal to 0. We're going to plug it in there. So we get 1 over 0 plus 1. So we get 1 over 1. And so the answer is simply 1. I hope that made sense.